150 years ago on June 23, 1865, Stan Wade, Brigadier General, Confederate Forces, who had been fighting for four years. He was very pro-Southern at the beginning of the war, part of the old Ridge family that had come west and the, the fights within the Cherokee Nation. Stan Wade was right in the middle of it. Man of action, a frontier businessman, a natural leader. Well, he rose to Brigadier General. He finally comes down to the end of the war Word finally trickles in from the east that Lee had surrendered and the southern armies are laying down their arms and he agrees to surrender. And so he goes to the home of Robert M. Jones, the richest Choctaw, probably the richest man west of Natchez, Mississippi, who owned two river boats, who had seven plantations, an entrepreneur, 28 general stores, brought the first cotton gin into the territory. Jones had been a delegate to the Confederate Congress for four years. So Stanway rides in, spends the night with Jones at his plantation about 14 miles away. That morning on June 23, 1865, they ride into Fort Towson, which was a military outpost. They meet the colonel uh, from the Union Army and they do a formal ceremony where he pulls out his sword and he hands his sword uh, to the colonel and says, I lay down my arms. They then sign the peace treaty. They give the sword back to General Wadey and they all agree that the war is over. And so Stan Wadey would go back home, live on the Arkansas River near Weber, Weber's Falls. He would open a tobacco factory at one point. He would reinvest in some of the things lost during the war. But like other Cherokees, he had to rebuild after losing almost everything. And so this treaty, this signature by Stan Wadey, ending the hostilities is a turning point not only in the life of the Cherokee Nation and the Indian Territory and the entire nation, but in the life of Stan Wadey. His sons and daughters would live on and rebuild the Cherokee Nation.